The other day, I was at a cafe in Portland, and I saw a whole bunch of beautiful photographs, but they were actually printed out on wood instead of paper. And it was something that I instantly fell in love with, and I knew I wanted to somehow find a way to do it myself. Now, luckily, the internet is great. I found dozens of different tutorials, and I ended up making a cheat sheet, which you'll find attached with this episode. It's easy, it's cheap to do, and it's the perfect vessel for this self-portrait project that I've been working on. Now, I've been going in and taking a whole bunch of different portraits of myself, Using yourself as a model is one of the best ways to practice different types of photography, practicing portraits, and working with a studio. I've always been inspired by the mid 20th century female photographers who took a lot of self-portraits, one of my favorite being Francesca Woodman. And she shot completely in square format, obviously in black and white, due to the fact that it was the only film that was available. And she took photographs of herself in many different situations and in many different poses. So I've been working on a self-portrait project where I've been taking lots of different photographs, both close up and far away, all in the square format, a couple in black and white, and a couple in color. Now I have five photos that I really want to edit and I want to print out in eight by eight inch squares so that I can transfer them out onto wood. And I want to give them a nice monochrome vintage feel and get them ready to print out. So first I'll go in and I'll show you how I'd like to edit one. And then I'll show you how to apply an action and batch process the rest of your images to get them ready for whatever project you'll be working on. So I have this photo open right now, and I'm just going to go over and I'm going to open up my perfect black and white. Now, I obviously have changed this automatically into a black and white, but I also want to give it kind of a bronzy sepia tone look. I want it to reflect the warmth of the wood grain that I'm going to be printing and transferring this on. So I'll go over to my effects library. And I'm going to start out in the 20th century classic silver category. Now there are a whole bunch of different great black and white presets that are already in here. I'm actually going to start with one that I knew I really liked, and then I'm going to tweak it from there and save it as a preset. So I'm going to scroll down, and one of my favorites is called Tarnished Bronze. And it's a really great starting point for me. It already has a border. It has that kind of bronzy look to it. It's already got the film grain on it. So I'm just going to tweak it a little bit and make it my own. Now once I apply it, the first thing I want to do is I want to lower the film grain. Right now on the right hand side you'll see it's at 3200 Ilford Delta. Now that means that the film grain is really, really large. So I'm going to go ahead and change that film type down to a 100 ISO film so that that film grain is still there but it's a lot more subtle. I do want it to have the appearance of looking like a film photograph but I don't want to go too far. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a, a 100 Kodak right here. It applies a really nice simple film grain without going overboard. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to change the color of the toner a little bit. It's a little too red for my taste, so I want to actually warm it up even more, make it a little bit more orange-yellow instead of just red-orange. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to leave the highlights alone, and I'm going to change the shadows. So I can click on my color swatch and I can go ahead and change that color swatch. So I have the HSB sliders up right now in my select color dialog box. And what that is, is hue, saturation, and brightness. So you change the hue, which is a 360 degree circle of color. You can change the saturation, so how saturated that color is, and then you can change the brightness, so the lightness and the darkness. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the hue, and right now it's all the way over towards a reddish tone. I'm going to move it over to the right to make it a little bit more orangey-yellowish. Go over maybe to about 25-ish, and that's a lot better. It's a lot less red, and it's a lot warmer, and it looks like it reflects a lot more of that kind of wood grain color that I'm looking for. And once I'm good, I can go ahead and press OK, and then I can kind of keep on tweaking a couple different things. Now, because this is going to be printed out on wood, and due to the nature of the type of transfer that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to lose a little bit of detail. So I want to make sure that it's very, very detailed, and it's very, very contrasty, so it'll look really nice. So I'm going to scroll up to the top and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to up my contrast quite a bit. I want to make sure that those blacks are really nice and dark and those lights are really nice and bright. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my detail slider and I'm going to move it up quite a bit. Now it's going to look overly detailed 
in the photograph itself. But again, once we print it out and we transfer it to those wood blocks, it's going to lose a little bit of that detail. So I want to kind of go overboard just a little bit. Now that I'm happy, I have a perfect border, my color is right, I've added the film grain so that it's not too much, and I've adjusted my tone panel. I'm going to go in and I'm going to save this as a preset. So I'll go up to my preset menu, I'll select save preset, and I'll give it a name. Now I know that these are going to be my wood block prints. I'm going to create a new category called DIY printing, and then I'll go ahead and create it. Now I know this is a little weird, we just created this preset, but I'm actually going to press cancel because I want to show you how to use actions and batch processing. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. It's alright that we lost the work because we saved this as a preset, so it's not a problem. And once I'm back in Photoshop, I'm going to record an action. Now on the right hand side is my action panel, and I'm going to select, I created a category called On One Action, so I know where to find them. I'm going to create a new action and I'll call it wood block print. Now once I record it, it's really important to note that when you want to record an action with any of the modules, you have to access it from the file menu under automate. You cannot access it through the on one panel on the right hand side. So I'll go to automate and I'm going to select perfect black and white. Now once it opens up into perfect black and white, we're going to go straight to my presets category on the left hand side next to the effects library. I'm going to go to my DIY printing category and I'm going to select my wood block print preset. Now once it applies it, all I need to do is press apply and it's going to load it back into Photoshop. Now all I need to do is just press the stop button in the actions panel and it's recorded that perfect black and white for me. Now I can go ahead and save my image. So I'm going to go ahead and save it, make sure that it saves all of the layers so I can keep my original just in case. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out of this image. Now I have a whole bunch of other self-portraits. I had five in total, so I've got four open right now, and I want to batch process and apply that preset to all of my different images. So I'm going to go up to my file menu go down to automate and I'm going to select batch. Now underneath the play section of this dialog box you'll see that the set of actions I want to use are the on one actions and the action I want to apply is the woodblock print one that we just created. Now underneath source this is specifying which photos I want to apply that action to. I can select them from a folder if I'd like to or I can choose open files which means all of the files that I have open inside of Photoshop. Now I don't want to save them and export them in any way because I want to go in and take a look at them and make sure that I don't need to tweak anything after it's applied, my preset. So all I need to do is go ahead and press OK and it will apply this woodblock print preset to all of my photos. Now through the magic of video, you didn't have to watch all of these different images get processed. A lot of times if you have a whole bunch of photos that you are going to batch process, this can take a couple of minutes. Luckily this only took about two to process four photos, but now that I've finished, I've got all five of mine ready. I already saved the one that I closed earlier, and now I have the last four that I've batch processed. I can go in and I can edit any of these images. For example, if I wanted to dodge and burn a little bit more, I could go ahead and do that, then I can save them and get them ready for print. Now luckily most of these photos were taken on the same day, so they're all the same size. I made sure that they were all 8 inches by 8 inches, and I can get them ready to go ahead and print them. Now, another thing that's important to note is that if you do want to print on wood, you will have to use a laser jet printer instead of an inkjet printer. And all that has to do with is the transfer of the type of ink and the type of paper that you'll be using. Laser jet printers use a specific type of ink that is much easier to transfer over to wood and fabric, whereas inkjet printers, you have to do another step in the process to be able to create your own woodblock transfers. Now when you are ready to print them, if you have any type of text on your photos or if you'd like to make sure that they're faced the correct way, you have to reverse your photos before you print them. Because this process is a negative to positive process. So you'll be taking an image, you'll be painting a type of gel medium on top of it, and then you'll be placing it on top of the wood blocks. So when you pick it up, the photo will be reversed. 
using this type of transfer process can be absolutely awesome. You can use it in tons of different ways, use it with tons of different photos. You can do it on larger wood blocks, and you can do it on smaller ones. There are a whole bunch of different ways that you can distress the wood using things like wood stain for monochrome prints, which can be great, but you can also use it to print out color photographs as well. You can even take a sander or take sandpaper and sand off some of the edges to give it more of that distressed frame look. So there are a whole bunch of possibilities that you can use this technique for, and a lot of different ways that you can customize it and make it your own.